we're going to call the meeting to order. Um, if you'll join me in a moment of silent prayer and reflection. Terry, will you call the roll, please? Matt Rooney? Here. 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 Nicole Cohen? Here. John Maston? Here. Please stand and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will entertain a motion to review and accept the agenda for the session. <coughs> I make a motion to review and accept the agenda. Second. Kathy Cox? Yes. Michael Cohen? Yes. Pat Rooney? Yes. John Maston? Yes. And now we'll review our proposed December 18, 2018 board meeting agenda. Superintendent Asaya. Thank you, Mr. Maston and members of the board. Take you through the agenda, starting with our consent agenda. Actually, Madam Superintendent, I have a, I I have a request for an, agen I an addition on uh, item number three. Yes. Uh, I will have a special guest that I would like to give some time. Okay. So under recognition of visitors, we will add. Special guest. Special guest. Special guest. Okay. And mystery and guest. Indeed. Indeed. And thank you for. Is it Santa Claus or? <laughs> Could be. Thank you. And I actually skipped over recognition of visitors and I apologize because I did want to state that we will be doing a reception for Mr. Rooney uh, for completing his four terms on the board. That will start at 5 30 with homemade cookies and uh, the meeting will start at 6 o'clock. So. I would invite everybody to be here. And we'll probably hear a big hallelujah at the end from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure about that. But. <clears throat> so, okay. Looking at the consent agenda. Not for me. Uh, item 4-1 is the minutes of our regular session November 20th, our special session on the 1st, and our work sessions from the 1st and 13th. Uh, does anybody have any questions on the minutes? Item 4.1.3 is our personnel report. We have no exceptions to policy this time. Four dot one dot four is our gifts and donations for the month of December. Four dot one dot five are the travel requests. I would like to share that we have a correction on the travel request. There will actually be 30 students and three advisors. So that has increased. Or three chaperones, excuse me. And this is the Key Club leadership field trip to Albuquerque, New Mexico. So we've done this annually, and the um, local key cub pays for a third of the cost. And that's the end of the consent calendar. Under old business, we have item 5.1. Uh, this is the continuation of the discussion on the approval of the land exchange. Uh, that was brought back to the board at the request of the developer and is uh, coming back for a discussion and possible decision at our next meeting. Questions? Comments? Item 5.2 is coming back again. Our um, discussion and action regarding the expansion of our Lake, Has Lake Havasu Classical Academy at Oro Grande. Uh, again, this is coming back. We had mentioned that we would bring back our considerations. And I do have a copy of some of that information now so that the board has time to review it and, um, and ask any questions that you may have between now and then. So I'm 
going to pass that down. Again, these are drafts, so I would greatly appreciate it if they were not shared at this point in time, because there may be some minor changes to them. Let's see. That's right. Thank you. <coughs> If I may ask the board to look at the last two pages of that packet. One of the things that I will be sending out to you is a spreadsheet that was developed by Mr. Bitterman. There are some samples of what that looks like on that second to the last page on um, what it would cost per classroom by subject, and those do vary by grade level. There's an, also an example of the um, school-wide text costs, so that you can see how these numbers were gathered. And then if you look at the following page, <clears throat> what you will notice is at the top of that following page, when we approved the magnet pilot at uh, Oro Grande, for 1819, we allocated $150,000 in one-time funding. Uh, that money was for instructional improvement funds, and that has been set aside. Uh, when you look at the actual totals, and again, there's there's still a couple of things missing, so these are not final yet. Uh, but it looks as though the majority of the costs, should the board determine to go school-wide, would be uh, paid for out of the money that was previously set aside for this project. Uh, we also anticipate that there would be an ongoing cost of approximately 10000 a year for consumable materials. So that's where we are right now on the funding. And again, I'll have a little bit more information for you at the meeting. And then the slides that are in the front of that were some of the points that we will make for the board and for the audience. It gives you a chance to review and ask any questions. Um, I met with a, a Jamaica parent yesterday. She said she had tried to email Pat. She had wanted to speak to him also. But uh, concern about equity in the school district with the uh, amount of money for this project when there are needs at other schools as well. Mm -hmm. And she mentioned, um, I believe she was the uh, PTS president at Jamaica for some time. And she mentioned that uh, the uh, PTSO has had to raise money for the licensing for Accelerated Reader every year. I think she got 6500 And then again, um, over 5000 to renew the Scholastic Story, Story Works or something. It's non, it's non, uh, non-fiction reading right. for the students. And um, of course, the Title I schools have that extra money to pay for those kinds of things out of their, their money. And so she brought that up, and she had said that she would try to be at the meeting tonight. I'm assuming she will be at next Tuesday's meeting. And uh, those are supplemental resources. They're not uh, core resources. Mm -hmm. And so they aren't necessarily the ones that the district would fund, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, if we had identified the funding for those things. That doesn't make sense. Said, I said that. Don't just ignore that. Okay. Um, however, we, we actually do have funding in district additional assistance for uh, looking forward for curriculum adoptions. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for us right now, it's just mainly going mm -hmm. through that process to identify how we want to thoughtfully spend those mon monies on core materials. Uh, what, what is actually being allocated for the magnet school, this was as this was discussed at the time of that approval, was about a completely different concept that would bring our ADM back into the district. And the funding was money that we had that was one-time funding. And so we knew that it could be spent and um, wouldn't necessarily be ongoing. Uh, what we have also had an opportunity to look at is if we can attract the ADM, the <coughs> Was it 22 students? Was $100,000? Right. So if we could bring 22 <coughs> students back to the district, that's $100,000. And that is um, 10 times what it costs to do the annual continuation of that program. Okay. So, so in terms of, of thinking about this is a different program, it's got a different purpose. Mm -hmm. um, the issue of materials other sites is not because at this point we don't have the money. We do have money set aside for curriculum adoption. We just need to go through that process and determine what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, I thought yeah. I should let you know. I appreciate that, and I think that would be a good discussion to have at the meeting next okay. week. And I also, because I know it's very confusing, I also want to make clear that that um, IFF money, or is it Instructional I Improvement Funds? Yeah, instructional. I IF money. Uh, we had it sitting there. We've had it the whole time I've been on the board. Yes. It's never been used because very little qualifies for it. So you couldn't take that money and and divide it amongst the That's elementary correct. schools and purchase scholastic subscriptions That's or correct. to do these things. It doesn't qualify. So yes, thank you for clarifying that. That's important. All right. The next item is in new business, and this is item 6.1. This is a request to approve. Pardon? Are we done with that item? Oh, I'm sorry. I just wondered if there was any other. I mean, we were talking about it, but I didn't know if we were done with that action. Any other questions on, on 5.2? No? Is it? I'm sorry. We're backing up to 5.2. The magnet school. The magnet school. Right. I, I'm, I'm just at, going back to the the other item before that on the land exchange. I didn't know, is that a time we could, that we could talk about it, or is that later on in the meeting? Um, we've actually uh, talked with council prior to this, and we have a, a plan of action that we need to discuss off off the public record. Okay. I'm just... Yeah. So there's, there's no input from the public on that in the work session? If you would like to give input, I we've, we've discussed it at length for over an hour as a board. Sure. But if you'd like to give input on it, we're happy to hear it. Just some, just some questions. Did, now, my understanding is, the, the question I had is, I understand that it's an asset of the district and and I, I heard that if it's a like exchange, there has to be more of a benefit to the district if they do an exchange. The question, the question I had is, my understanding is this was a gift to the district. It's not something the district, you know, going back in the history of the city, that it was set aside for the district. Someone gifted that property to the district. So my question would be, wouldn't that be different because the, the district has no basis in it from the fact that it was a gift. It's just, it, it goes into their, their books as an asset, but it's not an asset that they acquired by paying for it. They just, they just received it. Um, when somebody gifts something to a, a government entity, which is what we're talking about here, it becomes the property of the governmental entity. It becomes a public asset. And as a public asset, there are, there are rules that govern the sale or exchange of that asset. And so whether or not it was gifted now or gifted in 1971-ish when the city became, was, was, was plotted out and all this property was divided up for schools, Actually, it doesn't really matter. Well, if somebody... The for particular example, property was not gifted. It was actually exchanged to the actual property that was gifted. So this was exchanged prior to to the other property that was gifted over. And it, it's a long term and behind it and stuff like that. So right, but, but it's still considered as a gift. But, but it, at the end of the day, whether it was gifted in the 70s or it was gifted today, it's still now a public asset. And we have to apply the law to it. As so, someone. so if someone gifted, say, a boat for whatever reason, $75,000 boat to the district for whatever reason, then how would how would the district dispose of something like that? Mr. Murray? It would still consider the asset. It would be, and it would have to go through um, the, necessary, uh, the necessary process of, of getting rid of a fixed asset. Um, it would have to go out to, for a public auction, just like we would if we had a bus that we would send to auction so that we would get rid of it. Um, it's the same, it would be the same process. We're talking about land, so there's certain statute that, um, that is, spe is specific to just the land exchange. Uh, but if it was a boat or a bus, it would go through a public, um, through a, a governmental auction 
and there's certain a certain process in which we have to follow in order to get rid of that asset. So land is different than uh, not, uh, different types of assets. Yes. Actually, the statute is specific to land. Okay. Any other questions on the land exchange? Okay. Is there anything further on 5.2, which is the uh, magnet school? That's 5.1, isn't it? I think it's actually 5.2. Um, I think we're ready for 6.1. Okay. Thank you. 6.1 is a request for approval of the Reading Horizons annual software. Um, our Reading Horizons Discovery Phonics program is our K3 phonics program. And in the past, we have had the um, uh, computer based component of that program. When we refocused on the training and upgraded all of our materials this last year, we did not upgrade the technology component at that time. We have received performance-based funding for three of our schools, and that funding is very restricted. It can only be spent at those schools, and it can only be spent to supplement uh, an existing program that is successful, that helped them to earn that re results-based funding. and so. Uh, the three principals at those schools have requested that they use that funding to add the software component of the Reading Horizons Discovery Phonics. So that is what this is for. Any questions on that? Yes. Can I ask you? Um, over the years, I've become I'm, you know very familiar with many phonics programs. I'm not familiar with this one. So what is it about Discovery Phonics that stands out? is unique, is effective, as opposed to other phonics programs. I'm going to let Mr. Gardner answer that. Please use your microphone. <coughs> I'm sorry. I think reading discovery phonics is more prescriptive and allows teachers the flexibility to differentiate instruction based on gaps that are identified for students using that software. Individual so they, students. Yes, individual okay. students. So they get real-time information that they can utilize to get kids caught up okay. quicker. And, yes. and that's the supplemental piece of it. Was your question regarding the software or the program itself? All of it. All of it. Yes. So the software is filling in the gaps? Yes. Or identifying the gaps? No, the, the assessment identifies the gaps, and then the software provides independent lessons for students to get caught up in those skills. So my, I only had one question. My question was, if it was so effective, and I understand that these are the only schools that qualify for it, but in light of the question on the last action item, why aren't we proposing to do this for the two other elementary schools? Three. three. Well, if the vote goes, then it wouldn't be three. It would just be the two other ones. So that if I may, um, we actually looked at it initially. And the cost is an annual cost. Right. It's very cost Ten prohibitive months. as an ongoing um, for the core. Because this funding can be used to supplement, and then it can also be used in the future to replicate successful programs at other schools. And so if we <coughs> utilize this funding and purchase it for the three schools who qualify, and then we receive the funding again the following year, we can use it to fund the other schools. So it's a it's a technicality of the funding. And we're not paying for it out of Title One. No, this is this is um, as exclusively a, a performance based funding award that they received for their uh, test results from the sixteen seventeen school year. Okay. And then <clears throat> the other point that I and this isn't a question, I just wanted to make the point as I look at the total for three schools, thirty two thousand. Uh, for one year. It's one year. So I just want to go back to the point of the magnet with 10,000 a year in consumables. That's for the whole, for everything, yes. right? Versus one program. So I thought that would be helpful. Any other questions on 6.1? Agenda item 6.2 is the uh, agreement between Lake Havasu School District and MCC for our dual enrollment programs. Uh, this is a, typically an annual contract that we bring to the board. 
we are coming a little late with this contract this year. Uh, our apologies on that, but it is our ability to offer those college courses as dual enrollment courses. Any questions? I have a few concerns. Um, can we get a copy of the IGA? Yep. Please. And so what courses are we eliminating for next year from the high school? From dual in, in terms of dual enrollment? Period. Dual enrollment? Why? Here, any. Are we eliminating anything? Because we keep adding but we're not eliminating. So I'm wondering, if, are there any classes that we're not going to be doing next year? At this point, no. Okay. So that kind of highlights one of the problems that I think that we continue to have in this district is that we keep adding without taking <coughs> anything away. And if you have less staff and you keep adding, then everybody, it, it just gets thinner and harder to do. So okay. can I address that? Absolutely. Part? So with the course catalog, these choices go out to our students, and if we do not fill a class, that class is not offered them. Um, for instance, we had AP Chemistry. We did not have enough students to warrant having AP Chemistry this year. So to utilize our resources in the correct manner, we went back to those students. It ended up being like seven or eight students and giving them other options at that time and closing that class so that we're using our resources correctly. Okay, thank you, because that was my second yeah. question. Do we have two kids in an AP class no. <laughs> and pay a teacher to, yes. okay. Um, so then it's a little confusing just the way it's submitted that it doesn't identify which one is dual enrollment, which one is, because I'm sure guitar is not dual enrollment. Oh, I'm sorry, that, that actually is the next item. Oh, I'm sorry, That's I'm okay. merging them all together because mm -hmm. So the, okay, the first one, 6.2, is sure, the MCC sure. dual enrollment. Right, right. Um, and then I would also like to know what MCC textbooks specifically are being proposed or used for these classes. So you would like a list of those? Right, because okay. there are so few things that we're required to do by law. One of them is to approve the curriculum. When we don't even know what book it is that's going to be used, then how do we approve just an overwhelming, I understand it's MCCs, but we should at least have knowledge of I, the resources. In the, um, the textbook list that we've given you, the courses that are dual enrollment, those are noted, the textbooks are. Okay. So they should be in that list. Okay. But these are new courses. But these are the MCC courses are the same ones. The 6.3 is but, where we're getting into the okay. courses. I'm not trying to be argumentative. That's okay. Let me know if I'm not understanding this. We're going to, okay, this is a separate agenda item, but as soon as we go through this and approve it on next Tuesday, well, then we go to the next thing, which is the dual enrollment, which, no? No. These, these are the dual enrollment courses that we already have on file with MCC, and it's just that agreement that we can continue to have them have dual credit for it. Then the next page is some new courses, and those are those are completely different. They're not dual enrollment. The, I, the IGA um, specifically states not that you not that you maybe it would them. be clear if I had yes. that. The IGA is it's the same as that's been used in, in previous years. The IGA simply states that the district will um, provide teachers to teach MCC courses, and that in return sure. they will the students will receive credit for those courses, college credit. So it's, it's, it's a wash as far as the financial goes. It, um, we pay MCC um, the tuition. They pay us for our teachers, but it's the exact same dollar amount and our students get the credit for it. I understand that. So what is it then on action item 6.2? What courses are the dual enrollment courses? Because they are not listed here unless I'm having a real block. They are not listed. They're, okay. not, they're not. No. So what are the dual enrollment courses? So we need to get you a list of our dual enrollment courses. And if you don't have enough kids to enroll in the dual enrollment course, you said that there's other arrangements made. So historically, the dual enrollment courses fill up. Okay. Yes. So when we were talking before, you were talking about the next action yes, item. Six okay. Three. Yes, six point three. Yes. And on, on 6.2, um, our teachers then have to have a master's 
in their in their subject they're teaching in order to teach that dual enrollment course? They have to. <laughs> All right, here goes another lesson. <laughs> um, I, I I'd love the lesson. Thank you. Yes. Um, MCC goes through a different accreditation process than. Than our high school does, or that that Jamie deals with in personnel and certifying a teacher in a classroom for us. They go through a whole separate entity. That entity has um, changed the game a little bit, stating that you do have to have a master's in your content area. Example: I use Larry Olson. He teaches a DE math course, two DE math courses. They're semester-long courses. Um, Larry currently, hopefully he's not mad at me that I'm a public director, does not have a master's in math. He has a master's in education. Therefore, MCC and their way they accreditate in licensed teachers is stating that Larry's not qualified to teach that course. Larry has to have a five-year plan on how he's going to move forward to get his master's at that point. Um, and in the past, it has not been that way. This has been something that has started most recently in the last couple of years that we've been slowly addressing and, and moving forward and making sure that our students have the best opportunities available to them down the road. Has that hampered um, the ability to offer dual enrollment courses at all? It has. Um, most of, uh, the most recent one that we did have to get, get rid of, it was because of not having a qualified teacher in, in the eyes of MCC and the rules that they have to follow um, was dual enrollment Spanish. Um, we have qualified Spanish teachers that can teach it, but because they do not have that master's in place when these changes came about, they did not approve us to have dual enrollment Spanish. But have allowed us to continue with the people that we've had in place teaching those classes for years. Am I missing anything, Jamie or Diana? And, and we may, I mean, we've had this discussion already. There are several staff members who do have master's degrees and not in specifically in their content area. And so they may or may not choose to pursue that. And if they do not, then we will not be able to offer those courses. Would that, would that be a reason that we're adding AP physics, for example, because we don't have a qualified I have physics to, teacher to do the dual enrollment. Mm -hmm. So if we're playing cards, I'm going to show you my hand right now. Okay. Um, that we are slowly adding because it is costly to get the correct training for AP um, teachers. So we've been adding on average one a year so that they're trained appropriately to go in and teach the class and to put Lake Havasu High School in the position to offer those courses to our higher level kids in fear that dual enrollment is going to go away. Okay. I'm all clear now? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Yes. Thank you, Scott. Yep. Okay, anything else on 6 2? 6 3. 6 3. 6-3 is the approval of new courses for the Capital <coughs> High School for the 1920 school year. And the um, school has submitted uh, several courses that they would like to offer as noted in the cover item. And then there are course descriptions uh, attached to the item for that. So questions on those courses and course descriptions? Yes. So. The whole elimination thing, that's answered. So CTE, so CTE is broken out. Criminal law and procedures and crime scene management, those are just regular classes. They're not CTE classes. The, the first four that you mentioned are CTE. Okay. The crime scene, the criminal law, and then the journalism and publication are all CTE. Okay. So I'm just going to state, I think that it's a mistake, this criminal law and procedures. Um, the idea that we would be talking about criminal law and procedures with students that have very little and constitutional amendments, this seems like there should be a prerequisite for this kind of course. The one below it, crime scene management, that seems reasonable. I mean, because it's, it's different. I think, I don't know. I don't know if I'm uh, comfortable with this kind of course, for what purpose? We don't offer any course that is just Constitution. 
or just, do you see what I'm saying? But we get into all these cyber crimes, drug crimes, child pornography, pedophilia. That seems wrong. Really wrong. I feel like our kids are inundated with that. And I feel like there should be a prerequisite before we're putting that on young men and women before they have a knowledge base to have that kind of discussion on those topics. I, I think what you're saying is, is that without a good foundation right. in the basics of civics, it's very tough to have those conversations. Right, and not the civics course that the governor proposed. You know, right. not right. that program. No, no. That's but, not the program. <laughs> but it, it, if I could ask a ask kind of a, a, a clarifying question before we get into that, Mr. Becker. Um, are these simply rebrandings, these first four? Because we've seen a lot of those course name changes coming down from ADE. Nope, as soon as you've got this, we will be doing that in January. Okay. That's, that's what exactly what happened, which has happened for three years running now. Um, as you recall in past years, these courses would be second year courses going through okay. the law and public safety, and then this would be moving on past that. I think part of the reason that the, this particular course um, concerns me so much is because I spoke with Mr. Aarons when he started that program last year, right? I mean, one year in, and I just don't feel like we're prepared to add to those courses, or that particular course, at least not with the top one, because everything was so brand new last year, and then here we are doubling down and tripling down on it. For, for what purpose? Like, what is the purpose? Are we not satisfying enough of the desire for criminal law with our kids that we need to add two more courses after the first year? Isn't this a program, a CTE program, not just a class? Correct. So it, it's a complete pathway that you start building with the first year that, that you're referring to and you continue to build down that pathway for the criminal law. Is it a four-year program, like some are? No, it's two? not four-year. It would, it would, is there a goal for it to become a four-year program, or is it just going to be a two-year program? I would have to get back to you on that so I don't misspeak in public. But um, it's not yet a four-year program. It will not be a four-year program. This would be the second year of the yes. program. Yes. So, so, so the prerequisite would be to take the first course mm -hmm. to get into either one of those two, yes. and, and I'm, I'm assuming those are both a semester, or are those ones two, are, two individual in year-long one classes? The ones that are in front of you are semester courses. But there was, even though that they may be new and maybe they are going to be a program, but when this program was originally brought, it was brought with nothing. Like there was no curriculum, there was no, it all had to be made up, so are we now receiving a program in these courses, or is it the responsibility of the teacher to meet the standards for the whatever teacher, the standard happens to be for? The teacher meeting the standards. Okay. That's so the, does CTE, though, provides a, yes. like a course outline for it, so it identifies all of the content that is supposed to be taught, and then the teacher develops that? Yes. The state provides. Yeah. <laughs> It's a very popular program. Students who want to become police officers or go into security or FBI, that kind of thing, go become attorneys, uh, they're, they're just very interested in this program. I, am I, it was popular last year. I don't know if it's still popular this year. Yes, it is. Okay. A lot of things are really popular. I know this digital communication is really popular. Um, but I mean, I know that this subject matter is very popular, but I have concerns about the course, as it states, is going to examine legal and ethical issues of media law and copyright, when I know the biggest, brightest brains in the business can't comprehend what the legal and ethical issues are right now. So I just feel like um, we're just jumping the gun over you know, where there needs to be a foundation. I understand having programs for people that aren't going into college um, or aren't pursuing college, 
as specifically states in the foreign language one, for students who may traditionally not be looking at attending a four-year college. So how many students do we have that are interested in learning a foreign, foreign language that aren't pursuing college? Probably not a ton, but this all kind of goes back to we're adding more and not taking them away. I, I actually have one in my house that is pursuing the foreign language. Of course you do. <laughs> you have the exception to every rule in your house, John. Probably. Um, all right. AP Physics, Concurrent Enrollment in Algebra 3-4. I actually like the fact that we're going to have AP Physics. So the the onset of what really brought this to is obviously tied to MCC and moving forward. We had a number of students, not a large number, last year who took our physics class, met with the physics teacher after school to do some extra studying, and to take the AP Physics test, you do not have to enroll the class or be enrolled in the class. You can take any AP test you would like. Um, you're not going to be prepared for it unless you do some extra work. And we had a number of students that did okay on it, and that interest is there. So we wanted to provide that opportunity for them and also put us in a position moving forward with what's going on with MCC as well. Thank you. I didn't have a question though about no. that course, actually. It was just, a, okay. I had underlined AP exam in May, so I wondered if those results are ever shared with the board. Yeah, the definitely. results of okay. how many kids are taking the. Yeah, we have not done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we used to have an AP physics course at the high school mm -hmm. years ago. And, it, and that uh, is back to uh, do we have somebody qualified to teach it? Exactly. They did not right. for a number exactly. of years. Yeah. Now Tony, we have somebody Tony Melly taught it, and he was qualified. Just like we had uh, AP. Uh, calculus and and it's just really good now because a lot of times the universities are looking for people you know they see an, uh, an honors course or whatever and they're really uh, sort of oftentimes dubious about the quality of those programs depending upon where they're at so if they have that AP on there that tells them right away it, it's sort of like if you take the ACT or the SAT test it sort of tells them right away the kid's been through, uh, you know, rigorous courses and all that. So, if you can get the kids and you can get the instructors, it's good for a school and kids. The, and then just two more questions: the nutrition um, piece of the lifetime fitness. So again, these are new courses. This this one, I misspoke earlier. Okay. This one is taking place of a class. So I did. Okay. But it is taking the place of aerobics, where aerobics pigeonholes that teacher to only teach aerobics. This is to be a little more broader view of different elements of okay. being able to be active. So will this teacher then be, um, I mean, I would like to know what kind of nutrition education is being taught, because there's a lot of new science, there's a lot of stuff on nutrition, and, you know, I would be interested in what that looks like or what the teacher's thought is. And then I'm really curious why we're going to do um, beginning level guitar. I'm, I'm wondering what that, I know it's an elective, but it's really not career or technical education if you're starting it in high school. You know, it's, it's an introductory. Well, we teach drums. I, we teach saxophone. Strings. It's it's just another music option. And you're gonna have a lot of interest in it after that. Okay. It's the guitar. It seems like something like that would be added after you've implemented music programs across the board, which I know we brought back music and um, we've got our drums and but it seems like you would bring something like that in after there has been quite a few years of it. I mean, because next year it's going to be beginning. Guitar is the first thing you learn. So, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> Teenage Guitar boys. Guitar is normally the first thing learned. So interestingly, so right now I'm assuming our we have a our vocal teacher. Um, she teaches or is currently teaching a period, co-teaching a period of musical theater. Um, she's a skilled guitar player. In our elementary schools, they are teaching guitar. Um, and there was a donation of guitars. So that is a skill that, that they're learning. So it is it it's something that they're building on. They actually loan the guitars to her throughout. Um, in her music appreciation class. So there's a skill that she has and there's a need, there's a need and a, a want. A want. For, for and there's equipment. equipment. And there's equipment. Okay. Uh, that's the difference. Right. All right. Do all of the skills, did all of the elementary get donations of guitars? So at the time it was only two schools because uh -huh. there was only the two schools in terms of Interesting. Well, no, because we only had two specialists, so now oh, that there's oh, the three oh, specialists, because it's a music teacher, it will look so a little bit different. And will that just move around? I, well, and I, I don't know if the new music teacher is skilled in that area, but at the time when the donation was made, it fit who was teaching. I have a, a question about world geography. I was so happy to see that. I wish that this would be, um, a lot of people in the audience don't know that the state only requires three years of social studies, so most freshmen don't have any social studies at all. Um, I would love to see this as a requirement, but of course that costs more money. What do you think the enrollment is going to be, the interest is going to be for this class? In the area that we struggle with at the high school, I think it was in place when, when you were there as well, is having enough mm -hmm. other electives for uh -huh. incoming freshmen uh -huh. to be able to enroll in. And so creating this gives them that opportunity to pick up an elective course so that their senior year rolls around, they're not involved, they're not enrolled in their, their core, and right. then all their electives trying to get caught up because it was never offered before. Okay. Their senior year, they have to take their, their econ. And, and sure. So what, what about not? textbooks so the, and maps and things like that? What? It, it'll be resources that, I mean, we're not going to put a, a textbook in that classroom at, the, at this point with, in the first year, it's going to be collecting the resources to okay. utilize and then looking at moving forward as we have our curriculum talks at each of the schools and moving forward from there. So that'll be utilized in your... In, in how this course is developed, yes. the curriculum conversations yes. that take place. Well, thank goodness for Google. Oh, gosh. I, really? No. Well, Google <laughs> actually can project these maps, Her maps. up on the screen. <laughs> Sorry, I watched the hearing this morning, so now I don't. Thank goodness for it. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I, I know what you're talking about. I didn't know what we were talking about for a moment, so now I know. But I didn't watch. No. They'll, they'll track when we use the maps. <laughs> they're tracking us through maps. They're they're tracking you all the time. I was going to oh. say. They they know how many steps you take. Every it's, movement. It's weird. Every minute of every day. <laughs> I withdraw my statement about. <laughs> Six point four. Six point four actually is the list of fees that are described in the uh, six point three <coughs> descriptions for the new courses that are being proposed. Any questions on those? So, can we going forward, especially because we're going to have two new board members coming on and I'm still confused about it. Can we identify when we're doing this? If it's CTE, it says CTE at the beginning because crime scene is CTE, but it doesn't say it. So it starts to make it confusing. Mm -hmm. You know, is it CTE? Is it yeah. dual enrollment? Is it? I think that was a typo that that was just left out. Um, but it should be CTE. Crime because be. is guitar yeah. considered a CTE or is no. that just an elective? Yeah. Yes, an just elective. an elective. See, yes. so it would be helpful. So on the that was confusing. For me. It should have CTE in front of the criminal and mm -hmm. crime scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And then earth science and music 
well, earth science, music theory. How come AP? There's no these fees, are fees for the others. So world geography is not going to have a fee. It's not, they don't all have fees. Right, but that wasn't the only one. We had a little. Spanish. There's no fee for fitness. Spanish. Okay. There's no fee for the foreign language. Or physics. Or for the geography. Or criminal law. AP physics does have a fee. Oh, it's at the very first one. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, that one's in alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make it more interesting, <laughs> let's all the times. I was looking for it also. That's why I noticed it was alphabetical order. All right, any questions on 6.4? And then 6.5 is our um, vouchers uh, do not get out of the word box. Any questions on any of that information? I only had one question. Where are the um, fundings coming from for youth court? Where does that get generated? Well, they got some money, don't they? Yeah, they do. I'll have to check into that. I don't have that right in front of me. Almost eighteen thousand dollars. I thought at one Four. time it came from the court. Yeah. When Bill Young did it, the court mm -hmm. sponsored it, and I think they had funding for it. When I was there, I was a sponsor, faculty sponsor there. Uh, we did not do car washes. Believe me, <laughs> I didn't raise any money for it. So uh, just not exactly what. That was my only question. Okay. Any other questions on that? In our reports, uh, this time we do have some reports. We do want to share uh, our business services report. These are the ongoing, uh, current, excuse me, school facilities board projects that we have for fiscal year 19. We have our ed services. Personnel, technology, and special services. So all four of our departments. I had a couple questions on the ed services. So when we do that ACT, are we going to um, notify the students that take that ACT that they don't have to do the survey that begins the test? We talked about it last year, and people weren't aware, but we are going to. We made note of it from your comment okay. last year. It just reminded me. And then the bottom one under curriculum, it says the high school and the middle school English departments met to review core and supplemental novels and to update novel lists. The updates will be presented to the board in January. Maybe we could have the list now since they've gotten together and made them, which would give us time to review the novels before it's presented to us in January. I requested them today. So you have them waiting for the Okay. Fantastic. Any other questions? No. Okay, do we have any other updates, announcements from the board, from staff? So I watched the Google um, testimony today and from Sundar, and so my question would be, especially for the high school, and I know you probably don't have the answer to this, but I would like one by next Tuesday, if possible. Did anybody watch that today? Because I can't think of anything more relevant for our students that are making these decisions that are being included by principals and staff to participate in this political arena to not watch a hearing on the very technology that is being used in our schools. And I will tell you, um, it's a little disturbing that Google has so much control over every facet of everything that we do, whether it's business, personal, whatever, and there is no requirement for them to answer to what they're doing. 
And so as our kids are learning about law or economics or, you know, all the leadership programs, um, a lot of that is funded by Google. And so you hear when people are talking about kids being indoctrinated, um, everybody hates that word, right? Because we're so divided. Um, because we can't just have a philosophical conversation about whatever the topic it is without it descending into two sides of politics, um, it would be really important that our kids are watching that. Whether it's English, whether it's economics, whether it's history, civics, whatever course, I can't think of anything more relevant for our high schoolers than to watch that and watch the answers, the questions and the answers, because it's, they're going to deal with it most. Can I clarify your question that you want the answer to? I'm sorry. sorry. And the parents. Well, yeah, everybody. Every. I mean, everybody should watch it, in my what opinion. Channel but it well, it'll be on. I mean, you can, it, you could watch it online. Just mm -hmm. okay. Google. Just Google. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna take it out. Sundar <laughs> Chu. <laughs> and, the, uh, the the disturbing thing to me is is not only do they have control of search engines and what you see when you put something into the search engine, and, and Google is the backbone for other search engines. It's not like Google is, is its own thing, uh, just as, as, as its own little pie where Google over here. Uh, they feed into Yahoo and, and several other ones. The, the other problem is, is the tracking. I mean, you can literally turn off your cell phone, and they can track you. You can go and you can browse in private mode, and they can track you. The guards that they have built in don't work, and purposefully. I mean, they, they had a guy that had an Android phone in his pocket, turned off and drove across New York City, and it knew where he had been and where he was going. It, 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 it's just scary what they're able to harvest about you as an individual. So when we get down to it, uh, you know, letting these these kids know that it's not just them and their friends online. That <coughs> there's this big brother type of a thing looking over their shoulder all the time, tracking what they do, knowing what they look at, creating a repository that they can harvest data out of. That I think is 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 probably the most important takeaway for any kid. That it's it's not just them and their friends in a chat room. That Google's there too. I was in a meeting <coughs> meeting last week. Someone was telling me about having their just a conversation with someone. And the next day on their phone, what they were talking about was on their phone. And we were talking about that there's a commercial for a portal, this some <coughs> device, this portal device. And the next morning, this friend of mine called me and said on his office manager's phone there were advertisements for portal and she didn't do anything <laughs> to search for it. And she wasn't on her phone and it just showed up. That would be Google monetizing. What's that's, on your phone? Yeah, that's I've, I've scary. Had a, I, I've had a friend who was sent uh, uh, a mashup of all of the pictures that were on his phone in, in like a slideshow. Never put him up on the web. Never he just taken pictures on his phone. And it's it's just amazing what controls they have out there and what they're actually doing to monetize you. Well, and I think what's more disturbing, what I found disturbing, and I don't want to give any details because I do want people to watch okay. it, but I wrote down some quotes as I was watching it. And, and when there's concerns about data breaches or um, concerns about hate speech, uh, Sundra said, quote, the system decides that. I heard that multiple times. The system decides that. AI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem because if you don't have any avenue to get a differing viewpoint, that's the epitome of indoctrination. And, and what I mean by that is, for instance, Prager University. I don't know how many people have heard of it. I mean, I've been watching their videos forever. Five minute <coughs> videos, they're phenomenal. Uh, like 40 of their videos, are designated by YouTube, which is Google, Alphabet, whatever, mm -hmm. as hate speech. So our students should know that. And if everything that we're doing is dominated by Google, we don't know that. 
we're not, our kids aren't learning that because it's being blocked and that's kind of what the hearing was about today is things are being blocked and they're being pushed to page 427 on the search list or, or whatever and um, when that's the only platform that the whole world is using it's actually evil, Google. <laughs> well, and, evil. and I have to ask Jeeves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ask Jeeves. I use DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo. So. Yeah. <laughs> the um, the interesting thing is when they say the system determines that they have programmers that Somebody's that there. that put together what the system is and how the system thinks and what the system is going to do. So, as a company, where the concern is is that you have a preconceived thought process going into this that removes right and goes left or, or however you want to game that. And, and, and that's really the concern is when you marginalize, the internet's pretty much a collection of all the good, bad, and indifferent in humanity. And when you marginalize a section of it that doesn't fit a political profile or doesn't fit a train of thought or theory, you're literally taking and, and, and removing something from the public square because that's literally what the internet is, it's the public square. So does that then, to a student knowing that they're tracked and controlled and advertised to and marketed and what they search for has, has had certain base points that may be relevant to them and their experience removed, shouldn't they know that when they're using the tools that we put in our classroom, which we heavily rely on Google Classroom? And we heavily rely on Google Documents and, and the Google uh, Excel equivalent and so on. I mean, shouldn't they know that? Shouldn't they have an idea of, of what it is that they're using for a tool? And, and, I, and I think that they should. I think I, I, I agree that they should. And I do think that that should be an ongoing conversation in the school district for technology. Um, because this has been the first time, I mean, this CEO actually refused to come testify for a long time uh, until he came today. Um, but they wanted him there when Zuckerberg came in, I think, to, act, to answer questions. And one of the things that caught me off guard was uh, somebody was referencing a professor from Harvard, which is Robert Epstein. And so I'm tuning in as I'm busying myself listening because I'm like, I know that name. Why do I know it? Because it's Jewish? No, not that one. That's not why. It's because I have the book, Team 2.0. And, but the CEO of Google completely, um, what was, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just completely discounted this Harvard professor's work, his studies, having to do with what's going on with Google. And very charismatic, I mean, very nice, nice enough guy, seemed real nice. But that's what we're doing in our society. So it doesn't matter if you, you have uh, backup or data or um, proof or evidence to support your claim, if somebody who makes 100 million a year, who's the leader of, of Google, says that it's, it's not worthy of considering well, then what is worthy of considering? So, anyways. Okay. <laughs> Not trying to preach. Mm -hmm. I, I will let you know that on December 18th, one week from today at 6 o'clock, we will have our regularly scheduled meeting where we'll vote on all of this. You're all invited back for that. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion we adjourn. <laughs> and I'm afraid now that Google will be following. Yeah. <laughs> Pat, you, you, you Not with your phone, Pat. <laughs> I don't worry about You don't that. need to worry with your phone. Take, take your jitter by phone. <laughs> Second. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you, Kelly. Kathy Cox? Yes. Nicole Collins? Yes. Pat Rooney? Yes. John Madison? Yes. And with Thank that, you. we're adjourned.